Do, 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 do. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Good evening, my friends. I am back again. I'm back again for the second time today because lo and behold, on our first uh, stream this morning, we didn't have any sound. We didn't have any sound. So I wanted to make sure uh, that we were able to spend our time together in our devotion. And so I want to say good evening to everyone as we come to share tonight in our daily devotion. We'll call it daily devotion evening edition. This is the evening edition. And so I want to thank you all for sharing with us. And I know there were a couple of you online this morning and, uh, and, uh, y'all didn't even tell the brother that, uh, that you couldn't hear him. Uh, but we're going to charge that to your heads and not your hearts, all right? Uh, but I wanted to just share with us tonight for our daily devotion. I don't want to miss our time together because it is, excuse me, it is a um, it is a time that certainly I look forward to, and I know many of you do as well. And so I just wanted to come back tonight. It's going to be a quick addition tonight uh, to share our devotion. Again, we did go live uh, at 11 this morning. But uh, for whatever reason, we didn't have sound. And I was actually on location. I was on location at our Baptist Ministers Union of San Antonio and vicinity this morning. And, uh, and so uh, ducked out of there, came online, and lo and behold, uh, went back to check and see how if you all had shared any prayer requests or any of those things and found out that we didn't have any sound. So, so here we are uh, tonight. And I want to just share with you all. And so I pray that your day has been blessed, that God has been gracious and kind to each one of you, and that you have found favor with the Lord. So we're going to get into it tonight. Uh, today's devotion is entitled, Assess Yourself. Assess Yourself. Bible declares in Romans 12 and 3, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Many people have a poor opinion of themselves and their abilities. Such people lead unhappy and frustrated lives because that which you believe of yourself is inevitably reflected in your way of life. As a Christian disciple, sooner or later, you must assess yourself in the light of God's Holy Spirit. This could be a humbling experience or it could be a real uh, reveal of revelation. And you'll begin to see who you can become through God's strength, wisdom, and inspiration. Stop disparaging yourself and convincing yourself that you'll never achieve anything worthwhile. You were created in the image of God, and in his eyes, you are invaluable. If you embrace this truth, the honest assessment of your life is about to begin. Assess yourself. Sometimes you got to look in the mirror and tell the truth. When I was working in corporate America, <clears throat> I had a, a difficult boss. He was difficult. He was our general manager. And uh, he would often say to me while he was challenging me because I was a young executive trying to get ahead. And so uh, my focus was on doing the work and getting it done. And uh, he told me one day, he said, Doug, what you ought to do is talk to some of your peers and ask them what they think about you. Well, uh, because he and I didn't get along that well, I, I didn't take his advice. I thought he was just trying to uh, really intimidate me and make others say uh, how he felt about me. But in a real sense, every once in a while, you do need the assessment of those around you who you know have your best interests at heart. Every once in a while, you do need to hear uh, from your peers, from your family, how they feel about you and what they believe to be true about you. And oftentimes uh, those people make us feel even better about even some of the small things that we do, some areas in our lives where we don't think we're making much difference, but in fact, we really are. We thank God for their assessment. But even more than that, brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to take a look in the mirror and see what God sees in us. Are we in a place where we're living below our means, where we're taking life as it comes and expecting nothing more? Or are we in a place where we recognize uh, uh, that the issues, the 
vicissitudes, the, uh, the challenges are only there to make us strong and that we are more than conquerors. And so the, the devotional writer says that um, many people have a poor opinion of themselves and their abilities and such people lead, lead, lead frustrated lives. And I believe that's true. That when we begin to only see ourselves as average or having nothing to bring to the table, then we begin to treat ourselves as such. And if you're not careful, the same way that you treat yourself, other, people's will treat, other people will treat you the same way. So I believe God is calling us even now to begin to understand that uh, you are made in his image, that God made you with a purpose and you don't have to be like anybody else. Uh, you can be yourself and God will uh, get the glory through your life. I like the, the, the text though. He says, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought to. So the same way that we can't think too low of ourselves, we can't think too high of ourselves either. We've got to make sure that we see ourselves as God sees us. Doesn't matter the, uh, the, the level of our education, uh, how much money we have in the bank or any of those things. Uh, we ought not think ourselves better than anyone else. We ought not think ourselves that uh, we are somehow above the fray because we have all of the accoutrements of life that would suggest that we are somehow uh, successful. Uh, because on the other end, when you don't have the money, when, when you don't have uh, the other things that uh, America would help us to believe that we are uh, successful in life, we in fact are uh, operating in a successful mode because we wake up every morning and we do the Lord's will. We wake up every morning and we fulfill the, the purpose that God has given us. And if you're living in your purpose, brothers and sisters, I need you to know this, that you are not living an unfulfilled life, even though everything that you desire has not come to pass yet. So just stop disparaging yourself. If somebody needs to hear this tonight, stop disparaging yourself and convincing yourself that you'll never achieve anything worthwhile. You're created in the image of God. You're created in his image. You're invaluable. You ought to tell yourself tonight, I am invaluable. Uh, somebody needs me. Uh, somebody is blessed by me. Uh, even, even, even the world, because I've been here. Uh, I've made a mark on the world. And if you can begin to see yourself how God sees you, brothers and sisters, your life will change for the better. Tonight's prayer is, Jesus Christ, I'm in endlessly grateful to have been redeemed by your love. Through you, I can inherit eternal life. Jesus Christ, I'm in, in endlessly grateful to have been redeemed by your blood. Let me tell you something. Um, back in the day, uh, when you would pawn something, I know some of you have never been to a pawn shop. You don't know anything about a pawn shop, but you go and pawn something. You need a little extra cash. You pawn it. You give it over. If that thing was valuable to you, you would get that slip. And that slip, you'd go back and you would, uh, you would reclaim, you'd pay back the money that they had lent you and you'd reclaim it because it was valuable. You pawned it, you didn't sell it. Now there's some other stuff that you sell because it, it doesn't have any value to you outside of what you've used it for. But let me tell you this, you're so valuable to God that God, even in the midst of the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden, when, when the Lord says, I'm through with these people, I'm going to leave them to themselves. You're so valuable to God that he said, wait a minute, I can't leave them in sin. I can't leave them by themselves. I've got to send my son to go and save them. Oh, what value we have. And you've got to begin to see yourself, see your life, see your future as valuable and do not stop. Don't stop. Don't stop when you're down. Don't stop when people are beating you up. Don't stop when life is challenging. Continue to live. Continue to love. Continue uh, to see that your future is going to get brighter. And I'm a witness that after a while, God will make your expectations uh, uh, catch up uh, with your reality. Y'all not talking to me. 
or he'll make your reality catch up with your expectation. And some of us are waiting for that day when that thing that we're expecting for our families to get better, for our children to come into their own. We have a level of expectation and anticipation. And after God, after a while, God is going to level that thing out and our realities are going to overtake our expectation and we'll be able to live in the fullness of of the desires of our heart. That's what God wants for you. And I pray that you want that for yourself as well. But if you're always down, if you can never see the best in you, if you if you never believe that you are 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 warranted, uh, yeah, that that change is warranted in your life, that that love is warranted in your life, that 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 uh, that God desires for you to have the best for your life, you'll never receive it. And so, uh, while you can't think more highly of yourself, you can't think low of yourself either. Amen. Uh, I know people from my childhood who. They believe the the lie of the enemy. Maybe they had parents who, you know, didn't speak well into them. They they would go to school and maybe they didn't have what everybody else had. And they started to believe what the bullies were telling them. And as such, they began to live that life. I want to tell you, you're more than the worst thing about you. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I said you're more than the worst character trait that you have. You're more than what you do not have physically, financially. Uh, you're more uh, than even sometimes what you see in yourself. You got to start looking in the mirror and seeing the possibilities. Come on, tell the, tell, come on. You got to see the possibilities. You got to see the potential. And then remember, God has the power to bring the promise together. So I'm praying for you tonight that, that, um, that God's heart for you and that your desire for yourself would marry up in expectation, anticipation, believing that it's going to come. And then after a while, here comes God with the reality and the two are going to collide and you're going to live in your best day. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day, the day that you've given, one that we have never seen before God and one that we'll never see again. Allow us even over these next few hours, God, to experience your grace to experience your love for us, to experience uh, the call that you have, Lord, and the promise that uh, that is before us. Lord, we love you tonight, and we thank you for all that you're doing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all, you still have four hours, three hours and some change to be nice to somebody. Why don't you send someone a text tonight? Let them know that you prayed for them. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that... Uh, that uh, God moved on your heart tonight uh, just to share a bit of sunshine uh, in the nighttime. Amen. Uh, and keep believing that God wants to do something special with your life. And I'm a witness that if you can believe it, God will allow you to achieve it. So I'm wishing you the best and, uh, and I'm praying uh, mightily for you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow when we will share again in another devotion. And then tomorrow night at the Bethany Church, 153 Lawton Street here in San Antonio, we're going to gather for Bible study uh, at 7 o'clock, what we call uh, Wednesday Worship and the Word. We're going to come together for Wednesday Worship and the Word. We're going to exalt the Lord, lift his name on high, hear a word uh, from the Lord. And then we're going to have our packing party uh, for the Immigration Center here in San Antonio. Uh, the cold weather comes and goes at this time of the year here. And so we want to be a blessing to those who are uh, who are um, migrants, immigrants, if you will, into this country uh, who are transitioning. We want to be a blessing to them, give them some toiletries and things that they need. And so we invite you out tomorrow night to just come hang out with us as we fellowship and have a packing party. Uh, if you're not in the city and you desire to be a part of this, uh, uh, you can go to our cash app, dollar sign, Bethany MBC 153 and share a gift there uh, or to Givelify, uh, Bethany Missionary Baptist Church, look up uh, uh, on Givelify and you can share a gift there. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to do it whether you support it or not, but maybe you want to be a part of something uh, outside of yourself. And so we invite you into this opportunity. And then we'll see you on Sunday. Sunday is Vision Sunday. 
as we're preparing uh, for our future, uh, we're going to look back and thank God for our past on Sunday. We're going to have a note burning service. A few years ago, we were able to pay off the mortgage on our existing church building. And so we're going to have a mortgage burning service on Sunday. Our guest preacher will be Reverend Kevin Nelson, the president of the Baptist Ministers Union. And so Bethany, if you're listening to me right now, I need you to invite everybody that you know to come out. We want to fill up the house on Sunday morning so that our president, when he comes, he's able to look out and see the people and they're able to share with us in this new season as we remember what God has done in the past. All right, listen, I love you, but I know that God loves you best. I am thanking God for you and uh, and uh, and it's all good. Sister Rayshawn, YouTube, I hear you. You say you can hear us now. I'm so glad you can hear me uh, because I went through, man, listen, let me tell y'all something. The devotion that I did earlier, whew, it was, man, I was killing it. I was killing it. This one is this one is all right. But the one I did earlier, boy, y'all should have heard that. I was on it. I was on it. All right. God bless you. Listen, let me just shout out those of you who are online. Thank God for you. Those of y'all sharing on our Facebook page. I see you. I see you. I see you. Sister Janice Kelly, God bless you. We're praying for you and your son. Let him know that we're proud of him and what God is doing in his life and cannot wait to see him again so that we can worship together. Sister King, God bless you. Always a great support. Porter. Sister Rosie Ellis, God bless you, my friend. We're wishing you all the best. And then to all of those who will uh, watch this broadcast at a later time, just know this, God is not through with you yet. All right, my brothers and sisters, I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow and we'll share again. Remember this, if you go in faith, God will.